Welcome to our HACCP principles training. HACCP is the backbone of our due diligence defense. It encourages food companies to be proactive when dealing with food safety issues. It has been a requirement in the UK since 2005 for food businesses to have a HACCP plan. It is a requirement from the World Health Organization, Farming and Agricultural Organization and World and Trade Organization that we should use HACCP during trade. What is HACCP? Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Point, or HACCP, is a globally accepted method for lowering the possibility of food safety risks. It is a progressive method of identifying hazards in food production and putting control measures in place to prevent, eliminate, or reduce these hazards to an acceptable level. It is a systematic preventative approach for food safety from biological, chemical, physical, and allergenic hazards in production processes, from raw material, production, procurement, and handling to manufacturing, distribution, and consumption of the finished product. Let's analyze what each of the words in HACCP mean. A hazard is something that has the potential to cause harm. Analysis means to examine something. Critical means there is a specific limit for a variable. It is an important way that after this critical step, we would not be able to rectify it. Control is the measures you put in place to control hazards. Point looks at what is temporal through time or a spot geographically. The key definitions are crucial for understanding HACCP. Hazard something with the potential to cause harm, whether it be microbial, physical, chemical, or allergenic agents. Risk. The likelihood that a hazard may occur. This is usually expressed as the likelihood of the consequences occurring. Control measure. Any action or activity that can be used to prevent or eliminate a food safety hazard or reduce it to an acceptable level. Monitoring. Conducting a planned sequence of observations or measurements of control parameters to assess whether a critical control point or CCP is under control. To build and implement a HACCP system, it is essential that prerequisite programs and HACCP plans are implemented. So, what does this terminology mean? The prerequisite programs are programs that are put in place in the company to control hazards in the environment and prevent contamination of the product. These are the aspects you need for your factory to work. Prerequisite programs provide a hygienic environment, operating conditions, and good manufacturing processes for personnel that reduce the risk of contamination of the food product. Hygienic practices need to be in place before doing HACCP. Common prerequisite programs may include, for example, cleaning and sanitation procedures, personal hygiene, traceability and recall programs, pest control programs and training, receiving storage and shipping procedures, among others, are also included. And the HACCP plans are prepared for each product or process and identify possible hazards and controls in place to make sure the hazards are prevented, eliminated, or controlled to ensure acceptable levels in the food product. To develop a HACCP plan, there are five tasks to accomplish before the application of the HACCP principles. Assemble a HACCP team, describe the food and its distribution, describe the intended use and consumers of the food, develop a flow diagram which describes the process, and verify the flow diagram. After the five preliminary tasks are completed, the seven principles of HACCP can be applied to ensure safe food production. These are normal operations for our processes, whilst HACCP is specific to each process and product. Now, let's go through the seven principles of HACCP. Principle 1. Conduct a hazard analysis. Principle 2. Determine the critical control points, or CCPs. Principle 3. Establish critical limits. Principle 4. Establish a system to monitor control of the CCP. Principle 5. Establish the corrective action to be taken when monitoring indicates that a particular CCP is not under control. Principle 6. Establish procedures for verification to confirm that the HACCP system is working effectively. Principle 7. Establish documentation concerning all procedures and records appropriate to these principles and their application. Principle 1 conducts a hazard analysis. This is where the processes are evaluated and where we identify where hazards can be introduced. All hazards are assessed and categorized into four groups, biological, physical, chemical, and allergenic hazards. The general definition of a hazard related to food safety is conditions or contaminants that can cause illness or injury. 
Biological hazards can include microorganisms such as bacteria, viruses, yeasts, molds, and parasites. Physical hazards include objects that are hard or sharp, such as glass, metal, plastic, stones, or wood. Physical hazards can lead to injuries such as choking, cuts, or broken teeth. Chemical hazards vary in the aspect of production they are related to. Some potential chemical hazards are the improper use of pesticides, chemicals used on processing equipment such as sanitizers, or maintenance chemicals. Finally, allergens are mainly associated with the raw materials in your production. Are they correctly segregated? In this step, you will need to make sure that you have the expertise to make an accurate evaluation of the hazards. The hazard identification is done in two steps. First, the identification of hazards, then an evaluation of the hazard. The hazard evaluation is a determination of the degree of risk to the user from the identified hazard. Once the hazard is identified and evaluated, the team must identify all the hazards, decide which hazards need to be either eliminated or reduced to acceptable levels, consider the risks, assess the likelihood of either the survival or the multiplication of any microbiological hazards, assess the possible production or persistence in the food of toxins, chemical or physical hazards, and decide what control measures can be applied for each hazard. A control point is a step in a process at which control can be applied, but where loss of control would not result in a risk to health. A critical control point is a step in the process where it is essential to prevent or eliminate a food safety hazard or reduce it to an acceptable level. Steps where there are significant hazards that are critical, if not controlled, they could make the final product unsafe and cause harm to the consumer. Steps that are not critical, that is, Control points are still important and require control. Critical steps need extra control through the HACCP system. No further step in the process will control the hazard. The team must identify critical control points. These are points where the hazard must be controlled or it will present a risk to the end user. Principle two is to determine the critical control points or CCPs. Our critical control point is defined as a step at which control can be applied and is essential to prevent or eliminate a food safety hazard or reduce it to an acceptable level. For each critical control point, you will need to identify the preventive measure. Some examples of CCPs may include thermal processing, chilling, testing ingredients for chemical residues, product formulation control, and testing products for metal contaminants. How will you prevent the hazard? use of specific temperature, peach, uh, time procedures, etc. Setting the critical limits is the third principle. In order to prevent, eradicate, or minimize the occurrence of a food safety hazard to an acceptable level, a biological, chemical, physical, or allergenic characteristic must be regulated at a CCP to a maximum and or minimum value known as our critical limit. For instance, setting a maximum or minimum limit for processing parameters that will control the hazard, such as temperature, time, humidity, viscosity, pH, salt level, chlorine level, etc. This is the CCP's critical limit. Corrective action must be conducted and all impacted products must be managed if this limit is ever exceeded. Setting criteria for every crucial control point is the next stage. At that time, what conditions need to be fulfilled in order to control the hazard? Is it a minimum temperature? Are there regulatory limits that you must meet for this control point? Principle four, create a system to keep an eyes on CCP control. In order to determine whether a CCP is under control and to create an accurate record for usage and verification in the future, monitoring is a planned series of observations or measurements. How will you measure it? Is it possible to continuously monitor the control point? If not, how frequently must the measurements be made to demonstrate that the process is under control? The efficiency of a program depends on the monitoring that occurs at the crucial control points. The monitoring program will consist of physical measurements or observations that can be made in a timely manner to provide the information in a time frame that allows you to take action and control product if an out-of-control situation occurs. Establishing the corrective actions to be implemented during monitoring is principle number five. This would suggest that the specific CCP is out of control. 
The goal of the HACCP system is to detect health risks and develop plans to stop, get rid of, or lessen them. However, when there is a departure from recognized critical limits, there may be deviations from established processes. Since this will be detected in advance for each CCP, corrective actions are required. The action must ensure that the cause of non-compliance is identified and corrected. The action or acts taken serve two functions to control any non-conforming product that results from the loss of control to decide how to dispose of a non-compliant product, ensure that no single safe product is issued, and document the corrective steps that have been made. By determining the corrective action before an out-of-control situation arises, you are ready to act promptly if and when it does, which will eliminate the source and stop the issue from happening again. In order to verify that the HACCP system is functioning as intended, Principle 6 establishes procedures for verification. Once a plan has been established, it is necessary to ensure that it is effective in preventing the hazards that have been identified. An effective HACCP system necessitates minimal end product testing, and it is also necessary to periodically verify that the controls are functioning as intended you will decide what records are required to demonstrate that the critical limits have been met and the HACCP system is in control, address regulatory requirements, and include records from the system's development and operation. Principle 7 established documentation regarding all procedures and records appropriate to these principles and their application. There are a number of advantages to implementing the HACCP program, such as the fact that it is the most effective way to ensure food safety reduces or eliminates the risk of producing unsafe products increases customer satisfaction. Targets. Critical areas of processing is cost-effective, integrates well with existing quality assurance programs, and enhances the food inspection process. For instance, the HACCP team has planned verification procedures, monitoring validation records and daily production records. Congratulations, our HACCP Principles training is now complete. Thank you. If you liked our video, please like and subscribe to our channel so you can see our future additions to this series. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. We are happy to help with any queries you may have. Please like and subscribe to support our channel. With your help, we would like to continue to create videos that you can enjoy and use to help you understand the food industry. Follow us on our Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Facebook to learn more about the food industry. Email us at foodforwardconsultancy at gmail.com if you would like to use our services. Thank you again and have a pleasant day. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. We are happy to help with any queries you may have. Please like and subscribe to support our channel. With your help, we would like to continue to create videos that you can enjoy and use to help you understand the food industry. Follow us on our Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Facebook to learn more about the food industry. Email us at foodforwardconsultancy at gmail.com if you would like to use our services. Thank you again and have a pleasant day.